Hello, this is Venture Ventures. I'm your friendly Dungeon Master, Jake Friday. I haven't been seeing anybody in a while, but we're back with little Baldur's Gate to send to Avernus. Gonna go to hell for a few weeks, or however long it takes to finish this adventure. And possibly their characters will be there for eternity. Uh, but we'll see. And then maybe we'll be back for the homebrew campaign uh, but we will find that out and figure that out after this new adventure straight from the publisher. Let's get going. I'm going to go around the virtual table and give us your character's name and uh, tell us a little bit about them, what they look like. Uh, yeah, Brian, go ahead. So I'm Brian. I'll be playing uh, Kairos the Red. He's a tiefling, his dark red skin, very muscular, dark black hair, um, but has bright glowing uh, orange eyes. He's about six foot two inches tall, very broad shoulders, always walking around in heavy chain mail with a big spiked mace that he wields like a club. Uh, he's often seen carrying around a heavy round shield as well with uh, the two heads of Hor, the god. Um, on it, <clears throat> and a matching coin hangs from his neck. Again, of the god Hor, it's pronounced Hor, and, and you, that's his god. And you have to say the god before before saying it. Yes, just to be clear, the god Hor. Um, let's see, uh, usually has javelin sticking over his shoulder as well, and like a big oh. like like army bag. Um, let's see. And that's about what uh, cool what he looks like. Yeah, awesome, Dave. You son of a bitch! I I don't want to follow Brian. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm Dave. I'm Dave. Um, I'm playing Okursh Okurth, but his friends call him Jerry. He's a half orc, half human. He's got gray skin. He stands a very tall, six foot eight, two twenty. Um, probably not as muscular as uh, Brian's character. Um, he too has a freaking javelin. God damn it, Brian! I think that, I was gonna be the only one with a javelin. I think that's starting uh, equipment. So, no, this is great. That means when we each throw them, it doesn't matter whose we pick up. There's that's more true. javelin yeah, yeah, yeah. for us oh, to okay. pick up and throw. <laughs> you're, a, you're, a, you're a glass half full kind of guy. <laughs> um. Yeah, and he and, and Jerry, uh, he's in the process of filing down his fangs. So he's he's like got one fang kind of half filed down. Um, yeah, painful. And he's a member he's of. He's, he's also got his. Uh, yeah, he's a member of the uh, the watch. So he's kind of dressed in black, and uh, he's got his. His usual. He's a barbarian, so he's got his uh, he's got his great axe, and he definitely carries around his badge of the watch uh, somewhere because they would make him do that. Uh, and you guys know that the watch is the main police force, defense force for Baldur's Gate, mainly staying in the upper city, and they pride themselves on knowing each and every person who's supposed to be in the upper city. So at the end of every day, they do a sweep of the upper city, which is the bougie section of the city, uh, to put it nicely. And they do a sweep and clear out all the people who aren't supposed to be there, people who don't have passes from uh, patriarchs or uh, nobles. And, uh, yeah, so if that's it, Dave, I'll move over to Roz. That's it. How's it going, guys? My name is Roz. I will be playing Rolikos, a male tabaxi. I am six feet tall with all black fur except for one. I've got, like, an eye patch of white. Uh, I try to look as menacing as I can with this eye patch, but it makes me look like a mean kitten. 
most of the time. <laughs> uh, I let's see. I'm carry a longbow with a couple, you know, quiver with some arrows in it. I've got two short short swords hanging at my sides, and I generally wear what whatever you would consider one step above beggar's clothes, like a clean beggar. Okay. Uh, and your background is gambler. Gambler. Okay. Yeah, and I have a chronic gambling problem. If I can gamble it, I will. And you should be uh, informed that any player that plays with me, and if they choose to play a tabaxi, they must tell us when they're purring. Uh, that's just required. No, can do, can do, if absolutely. It, if it doesn't happen in a while, I'm going to incorporate it a reason for why you're not purring into the campaign. <laughs> uh, I'm all for it. So, yeah. Let's go over to Gary. Who are you playing, Gary? I'm playing Jarvis Silverspear, uh, also six foot tall. Um, he's a male elf, a high elf to be specific. Um, he's wearing a black um, robe with uh, emerald green on the inside, uh, black on the outside, emerald green on the inside of the hood. Uh, he is carrying a quarter staff and a longbow. Um, he, he is the background of Sage. And you took the city-specific background for Sage, Baldur's Gate Sage. And, uh, yeah, so... You deal with people coming in and out of the city, especially going to and from Candlekeep, which is a famous library uh, a little ways outside of town, but I believe it's the largest repository for books in the realm, and you can't enter the... You can't enter Candlekeep without giving them a book that they don't have. So there's a large, a healthy book exchange uh, in Baldur's Gate that people in the lower city and outside the city might, uh, you know, try to jump people for books and sell them to uh, people with the means to buy them. Okay, and if that's it, let's get this damn thing started. Woo! Woo! Oh, we are. Let's get you guys damned to hell as quickly <laughs> as possible. But first, there's box text I must read. Box text. Welcome to Baldur's Gate, a veritable nest of rats and vipers clinging to the rocky slopes overlooking the Chianthar River. From their high perches in the upper city, the, the local nobles, known as patriarchs, gaze down with veiled contempt upon the common rabble in the grimy lower city, which hugs the foggy harbor. The whole of Baldur's Gate reeks of blood, crime, and opportunity. One can easily fathom why pirates and traitors are drawn to this place like flies to a carcass. Following the river farther east would eventually lead you to El Terrell, the capital of the holy land of El Tergard. Or at least that was the case until a few days ago. The flood of refugees from El Terrell has gotten a lot worse since news first arrived that the city has fallen. Everyone is saying Baldur's Gate is next, but no one truly knows who or what has claimed El Terrell. The Patriarchs pay a mercenary army called the Flaming Fist to protect their interests in Baldur's Gate, and by extension, the city itself. The Flaming Fist has gained even more power since their charismatic leader, Older Ravenguard, claimed the title of Grand Duke a few years ago. Apparently, Ravenguard is missing. In his absence, the Flaming Fist has sealed the city's gates to staunch the flow of refugees. No one is allowed in or out. All of this was brought to your attention shortly after you were drafted by the Flaming Fist to help defend the city. And all of you know, 
This is an aside. All of you know that the Flaming Fist or the Watch, uh, Jerry, you would know this very well, Flaming Fist or the Watch can draft citizens into, conscript citizens into their, uh, into work for them, and that, if you refuse, technically is punishable by death. That's just not me trying to get you to follow the adventure. It's printed in the book. So, just FYI. Uh, so, your orders are to speak to Captain Zodj at the Basilisk Gate, which pierces the city's eastern wall. I believe I put the map in Discord in the general channel. A couple maps. Uh, Basilisk Gate in the eastern wall and takes its name from the various statues that rest in its niches and perch atop its battlements. Unseen beyond the sealed Basilisk Gate, a dirt road stretches through the outer city slums to the bridge known as Worm's Crossing, then to distant realms beyond. Dozens of Flaming Fist soldiers are trying to control an angry mob of commoners eager to leave the city. Armed with only a vague description of Captain Zodge, a tall man, long black hair, and a leather eye patch, it takes you a while to find him. Uh, I don't know, that's pretty unique. A fight breaks out between soldiers and commoners, and you finally spot the one-eyed captain as he wades into the fray and begins throwing punches. So you see this one-eyed guy, and he starts just punching men, women, anyone who's fighting him in the face and yelling, Get back, you swill swine! Get back! I will end you! And, uh... Yeah, you think it's Captain Zodge. What do you guys do? We can't speak with him if he's being punched by commoners. Into the fray. He's punching to... commoners. Right. Okay. Uh, so gotcha. So they're not fighting him back. They're not fighting back. They're really? trying to. They're <laughs> trying to get out. They're trying to get closer to the gate to to potentially get out. Everything is sealed up. It's. Not mm -hmm. there's just so much panic. There's really no logic to like if they were to get past Captain Zodge, it would just gotcha. Roughly, how many people do I have to wade through? Like twenty or like a hundred ish? Like a ton or a uh, not too many. I mean, you're pretty close. You're within twenty feet of Zodge. So um, once he kind of calms this area down, you see plenty of other flaming fists. Uh, they're clearly marked by their um, red and yellow badge with a fist on fire, uh, and they're e being equally as rough. Um, Jerry, Jerry starts slapping some of the citizens, too, to get them away from the gate. He's just like, and then he looks over at the flaming fist, and he points at his, at his watch badge, and he's just like... And they go... Hitting. And the, the guys you make eye contact with kind of look at you, and there's not, there's a, 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 there's a rivalry between the Watch and the Flaming Fist. Uh, the Watch generally looks down upon the Flaming Fist since the Watch stays in the upper city for the most part. Uh, but uh, they welcome your help, and once you guys start helping, Zodj uh, looks at you, and... Uh, and uh, says, oh, you must be them. All right, this refugee... Yeah, yeah, it's us, yeah. Excellent. This refugee crisis has stoked the fears. The Baldur's Gate might suffer the same fate as El Terrell. Have you heard what's happened in El Terrell? Just that the city has fallen. Yeah. And the refugees are streaming it's in. like, disappeared. Yeah, there's some weird rumors, like there's a hole left where... It used to be. I'm not sure I believe that. But uh, anyways. Um, my, my brother's cousin's wife, he was. He said He said there was a, a, a big, their house just is just gone. So I don't know if that helps. But so you're saying it's just the house? Gone. Just the yeah, house? They were, in El, they were in El Terrell too, and their whole, their whole block, sorry, did I say house, I meant the whole block. It's just gone. All right. They were supposed to have a big party this weekend, and. 
just weird. They have to, yeah. Well, Put people some are into some decorations. People are freaking out around here. Uh, Duke Ravenguard's gone. He went to El Terrell, and so I'm putting my foot down. I'm not messing around with with uh, all these rabble rousers uh, trying to leave and trying to get in here. Um, you need help breaking up this crowd. Well, that's another thing. Raven Guard was visiting El Terrell. Supposedly, he didn't tell me much. I like to think we're friends, but uh, what I heard, he didn't tell me this directly, uh, is that he was there on a diplomatic mission when the city was destroyed. Uh, I really don't think that's a coincidence, considering the the people of of Elter Guard uh, and what they're like with their snootiness and all that. Uh, anyways, the Knights of Eltergard call themselves the Hell Riders. What a stupid name. It's not as cool as Flaming Fist. Oh, Hell Riders is just so dumb. I, I know, like, what a yeah. bunch of tools. Like, oh, oh, Hell Riders, our fists Whoa. are on fire. Like, that's so much more cool. Like, some people even say we can turn our fists on fire, but you know we don't do that often, just because we got to keep it in our back pocket. Cool. What do they call themselves now that they're actually like in hell? Just the riders. Oh, you think uh, they're in hell? Probably just the riders. Oh, that's what I heard. Okay. Well, good. They should burn. Then they can call themselves the Flaming Riders. And that'd I be do, a little bit cooler. You know, when I do the the sweep, sometimes I sweep uh, old Ravy's. I call him. I call him Ravy. Um, I do Ravy's house. And um, wait, you're yeah. you're from the Watch. You know. Yeah, man. Watch. Well, yeah. you, you don't see what we see down here in the lower city. So. Uh, I don't know. I like to mix it up in the city too. I do 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 a fair amount of city work. Oh sure, yeah. You do a lot of city work in the in the upper city with all those patriarchs being all all snotty and all their kids wanting yeah. to to escape into the lower city just to feel what it's like to to be amongst the commoners. Yeah, sounds real tough. Anyway, uh, I, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Hell Riders. A few of them escaped uh, the whatever destruction fell upon Elter Guard. And uh, they think we're to blame for uh, Elter Guard's, Elterel's downfall. Oh, what a bunch of self-righteous pieces of shit. We're arresting them on site, as you can imagine, but that's left us shorthanded to deal with another problem. And this is why you're here. I need your help in that matter. In arresting them? Uh, no, I'll get to that matter. I just wanted a little confirmation that you're, you're, we're still in agreement you're going to help. Not that you really have a choice, because your other choice is death. Uh, is that a little too serious for you guys? I'm no, sure. I've turned with the living, fist before. Living I know the rules. Good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but, but I, can I say that, uh, <laughs> that Jerry sees like a citizen like starting to climb the wall, and he just he just whips out his <laughs> javelin, and turns around, and just, and just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're to the wall. You're allowed. And then he turns back to the to the flame fist. He's just like, yeah, <laughs> make make an attack roll. Oh god. Uh. So I can do this, can do this in any window, right? Like roll. I don't know if you can, but we'll find out. Nope. Where do I have to do that? In I don't the, have any dice. In the roll channel? <clears throat> that go. Oh, okay, I see. Probably has to be a channel and not a group chat. Oh, that's not going to do it. So he, yeah, he misses in it. What'd you roll? I rolled a three, uh, which I think is a. <laughs> so, so you guys, <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> so this is Captain Zodge is saying this, like, for that, I need your help. And then Jerry turns around and throws it and it clinks 
Like so he so I add my strength to that, right? Yeah, you add right. five. Uh, you add okay. five so to I it. rolled an, I rolled an eight. Yeah. And so there's someone climbing the walls. They're having a real hard time, as you can imagine. <laughs> These walls are uh, not made for climbing. Uh, and um, this person isn't even wearing shoes, uh, balding heavily, uh, maybe cancer spots on the top of their head, uh, missing fingers. This guy uh, has no business climbing. No, he has no business climbing. And Jerry <laughs> turns around and chucks it and misses by a good, like, 50. It hits the, the wall. It misses by a good 15 feet, and the guy gets scared. It causes him to lose his, his grip, and he falls, disappears into the crowd beneath. And uh, Jerry turns, <laughs> turns back, and Captain Zodge goes, Yeah, well, uh... Apparently the watch doesn't train much in javelins, but I like your enthusiasm, son. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get him next time. I'm not sure you're uh, getting that javelin back. He's just <laughs> Jerry's just like backing away slowly towards <laughs> his javelin. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna ah, I got a little bit of. Oh, yeah, you can try to get I that back. Bit. Got a little bursitis in my uh, throwing arm. What the Jeez. fuck is bursitis? Uh, uh, the swelling of the bursa in my elbow. What? Anyway, is... he just keeps backing up towards his kind of getting pushing. Well, hold on, you're gonna help, right? Just give me a second here. What's your name again? Uh, Jerry. But my full name is Okorsha. Yeah, I don't care about your full name. Uh, so, anyways, uh, Baldur's right. Gate has long been plagued by followers of the Dead Three. You guys are well aware of this. The gods Bane, Baal, and Merkel. And I thought we'd wiped them out, but apparently not. Those fucking rats. I th yeah, I ki I've killed at least 37 of them. Uh, but anyways, these, these uh, they like to call themselves purveyors of fear and death, and they're taking advantage of the current crisis to commit murder sprees throughout the city and uh congratulations as my appointed deputies in this matter you'll have license to kill these wretches on site which is what you do with rats and cultists that's what my mom always told me and that's what i tell my men uh uh yeah you just i'm still, I'm still listening i'm still listening he doesn't need Further and further away, <laughs> getting his javelin. <laughs> and magically, like everyone is having a hard time even moving, but Jerry just backing away, he's just somehow making it through the crowd and just not having an issue at all making it to his javelin. Uh, yeah, so kill them on site, find the find their lair, wipe them out. Uh, as I'm sure you know, they like to hang out underground a lot. And uh, eliminate anyone who gets in your way, and, and uh, collateral damage is no issue. We're just trying to control this shit, man. This shit, before it gets out of control, the Flaming Fist will not have this. Uh, and if you do what I say, uh, your payment uh, will give you uh, 200 gold pieces, uh, in addition to my gratitude, which, dare I say, is worth more than that. Uh... And, uh, yeah, why don't you start a few blocks from here? Uh, there's a place called the Elf Song Tavern. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, there's a spa named Tarina that hangs out there gathering, uh, rumors for the guild. She owes me a favor, so tell her you work for me. Ask her what she knows about the Dead Three. And for the love of Balder and be nice, Tarina has dangerous friends, for fuck's sake. All right. I guess we'll hey, head I out. Hey, found, I found it. Oh, oh, no, that's just a stick. All right. Good. And he turns around and doesn't even look, and he just punches a random commoner in the face <laughs> and just goes back to doing that. Well, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, and I punch a commoner in the face and then start walking <laughs> towards Alsan <laughs> Tavern. Oh, hell yeah. And then he... <laughs> He wades into the crowd, you, and you have your javelin at this point, 
when you picked it up and started making your way back through the crowd to get to where the group is, much harder time getting through for some reason. Hey, oh, ooh, excuse me, sorry, sorry, I'm trying to, okay, um... People are like, what are you doing at here, you fucking watchman? Oh, uh, <coughs> um, just helping out the, uh, the cap over there, um, my buddies and I, on a little mission, can you just... As sorry. I'm trying to leave, I'm just going to be sorry. like, yelling at him, like, go around, dude. We're leaving. <laughs> yeah. You, you guys see, like, there's a clear spot to just walk through, <laughs> like, 15 feet to the side. It would just be so much easier. <laughs> and someone starts screaming in your ear, Jerry. We're all going to die. Oh, we're all going to die. Well, and she's, like, spitting in your I'm face. Gonna, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be okay. I'm going to live. I'm going to be okay. And, uh, yeah, eventually you make it you through. Might, you might die, though. Uh, We're all gonna die! Um, okay, so, to the Elf Song Tavern, I assume, or what would you guys like to do? To the Elf Song yep. Tavern. Heck yeah. 200 gold, and we get to bash some cultists in. I'm like game. It. And do collateral damage. <laughs> Okie dokie. And we have do whatever we want and get away with it cards. Yeah, so he gave you the uh, the badges, uh, and these badges are exactly uh, what I described for the logo of the flaming fist. Um, and uh, yeah, you arrive at the Elf Song Tavern. Uh, as you enter the tavern, you find yourself immediately enveloped enveloped by the heat and the noise of a busy tap room. On one side of the entrance stands a very large woman who's clearly got some orc in her, even ogre. And on the other side of the door is an empty suit of armor. Uh, not normal armor, you quickly realized, as the empty helmet is moving. Uh, and it glances at you for a moment before returning its eyeless gaze to the tap room. The tap room itself is filled with a wide variety of patrons, all of which carry at least one weapon, and in some cases multiple weapons. While either discussing and laughing loudly or engaging in hushed conversation in private booths. None seem to take particular interest in you. Two young men serve the tables while the middle-aged man standing behind the bar gives you all a slight nod as you enter. Uh, yeah. What'd you like to do? Uh, looking around, is there anyone that fits the description of Tarina? You do not see, uh, anyone that fits that description. Um, looking around, uh, yeah, you don't see anyone in this area of the, of the, uh, Tap room. In that case, I make my way to the bar, but to be clear, I'm not moving out of anyone else's way. Like, I just kind of square my shoulders and walk forward. Yeah, you bump towards the bar. one of the waiters, the servers. Uh, you bump one of the servers as they're walking by. He was trying to get by you about your armor and such. Uh, and he spills some of his drink, and he goes, Oh, I just got to refill this. And uh, be more careful and just keeps walking and drops it off before hustling the long way back to the bar. As you approach the bar, um, the barkeep says, what can I get for you uh, today, sir? Pine Vale would be great. <clears throat> okay. And I slap a few coins down on the table, whatever. It's the going rate for booze. The booze cost. Right Oh, there we go. All right, it's four copper. Sweet. And uh, he says, uh, "You, uh, your group." Oh, by the way, my name's Alan. I'm the proprietor proprietor of this business. Uh, he's a uh, half elf, and um, yeah, he's a uh, he's a. Uh, 
looks mildly annoyed, but is pleasant enough. Well, when he serves it to me, um, I'm just going to straight up ask him directly. I'm looking for someone supposed to be here. Goes by the name of Tarina. Supposed to be a nice woman, from my understand it. Uh, yeah, she likes to gamble. Uh, that takes place upstairs. Uh, yeah, she's upstairs. Did I hear you say gambling <laughs> upstairs? Uh, gambling upstairs, yeah. Yeah, uh, just upstairs, it's, uh, well, you can't miss it. It's, it's a small p- joint, so, uh. I'm sure she's causing a ruckus up there. But uh, can I get you something to drink, sir? Ma'am? I'm sorry. I'm not good with this. Uh, sir. Okay. We'll do. Uh, and I will also take a pint. All right. Four copper. How about it? Uh, now, keep in mind, uh, don't go start in trouble, please. I don't want to have to clean up after it, and uh, don't expect my bouncers to get involved with your fight unless you guys start beating on one of my servers. Other than that, have a great time. Noted. And I'll start making my way towards the stairs. Okie dokie. And... Uh... that. Climbing the stairs. Uh, You enter the main hall, uh, main area of this second floor. There are two tables in the middle with uh, six chairs each and a bare rug uh, right on the landing at the top of the stairs. Uh, A few kind of banquettes on the side and then you see a bunch of different doors which you presume are guest rooms um okay got that you see you see the person uh you see a few people at this table um where is the list Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're gambling. Uh, as you can tell, as I get to what they look like, Rollercoast, you immediately obviously know uh, that they're gambling, and you know that they're playing Baldur's Bones, which is essentially a dice uh, blackjack type of deal. Gotcha. How many, uh, what are, what are the wages looking like here? Are these big ballers or is this like, I'm uh, let's see. Yeah, they're, they're, um, at most a few gold, but yeah. the main thing is, is, uh, silver. Gotcha. And... Yeah, what would you guys like to do? Is there a room at the table? Uh, currently, there is one spot at the table. Is there like a, a pit boss or something? Uh, no, but you do... As soon as you guys came in, uh, the, the uh, armored... Animated armor uh, started doing a, a walkabout... Uh, the place so it's you think that they continue that upstairs every once in a while as well and how many of those are there uh it was just the large woman the half ogre half orc you weren't really sure and um the uh animated armor okay i'm gonna go take that empty seat okay um who else is at the table Mm-hmm. I hate the way these things are fucking organized. All right. So, uh, bah, 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 bah. 
Yeah, there's four four other people at the table. Um, they are a uh, a guy with no head hair, like he has no eyebrows or any actual hair. Uh, he's a human. Uh, there is a uh, halfling with a big scar on her face and a, another human um, who isn't really playing in the game but is feverishly writing in a small book. Uh, and then there's a uh, half-orc brawny uh, also playing. Jerry just goes right behind the guy that's writing and he starts peeking over his shoulder to see what he's writing. He is writing a play. Uh, he is... He is he's, he's really, like, interested. He's, like... He just taps the guy on the shoulder. He's like, you know, like, I'm kind of a writer, too. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, he scared me. Some, like, sometimes I have, like, cool dreams and I try to, like... Yeah. You know kind of like make a narrative out of them and I'm, know, I like I like to write I, I I'm, and he looks at your badge your flaming fist badge and your watch badge and he's kind of like confused and then he says oh yeah, yeah this is just like this is just like you know it's just like a day job to like kind of fund my other endeavors you know I kind of see myself as like you know polymus and just you know, I I got some uh, I got some cousins that are in the biz. So. <laughs> and at that um, point, uh, the human woman uh, says to you, "Hey, we're trying to play here. Stop bothering him. It's just, can you give us a set? Like, just get. He's almost. You're you're bothering all. Me, do you want me to play too? Do you do you want me to play? I mean, if you have money, uh, sure. Is uh, is Jackson working tonight? Is Jackson working? Ja here? I don't know a Jackson. Oh, my buddy said to uh, to say to ask about Jackson in this tavern. He said something about getting a like a comp for the first night or something. I don't own this tavern. You need to talk to Alan. Oh, Alan's working tonight. Got it. Alan. Alan's the owner. He works every night. Got it. Right, right. I knew that. Um, and the half orc. Right, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna watch. I'm just gonna watch. Jerry, sit down and shut up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kairos walks uh, kind of up and next to the human with no hair on his head, uh -huh. and um, just kind of gets real close to the guy sitting, just standing right next to him. Just looks, glares down at him. Um, and I think I forgot to mention that uh, he does have horns. They, like, curve down and around to a point. Very intimidating. Um, and he just looks down and says, your seat is needed. Oh! And uh, the human he just goes, I need a drink anyway. I'm just going to go. And gets up. And uh, the, the woman who was just talking to Jerry said, Scalder, what's his name again? Scaldwar? It's fine. So you gotta, are you gonna finish this? You're just gonna fold, you're, we're folding you. All right. And she uh, moves his ante, his bet into the uh, middle. I take the seat. Okay. And I assume, who else wants to play? Are, are there any extra chairs in the room there anywhere? Was, yeah, there, um, there's another table that's not being used. And um, so I walk over to the table and I grab one of the chairs that aren't being used and I squeeze myself into this table. Between who? Uh, between um, uh, who did. Uh, who's sitting next to the. Uh, one sec. Um, I sit to directly to the left of the halfling with the scar. OK. And um, the. Halfling, uh, as you might imagine, is uh, not is very comfortable in that chair. Plenty of room, uh, but she kind of snarls at you when you do, and she, you, I'm gonna take your money, and uh, 
the woman who was talking to Jerry says, "You know what? If I'm just gonna cut to the if you if the rest of you all want to play, let's just get this done now. Like scoot in. As long as you have money, let's play." And uh, so Jerry just kind of like it's like, "Oh, I uh, forgot my uh, forgot my wallet." Uh, forgot my satchel. I'll just watch, guys. Be right over here. Okay. All right. So uh, we got a tiefling. What's your name? Kairos. Kairos. And we got uh, elf. What's Jarvis your name? Jarvis Silver Spear. Jarvis. And we got. Uh... Excuse me. Do you want to play? Uh, Sir, speaking to you, roller coaster. Are, are you speaking to me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to play. It's the whole reason I sat down. Oh, well, I just wanted co- really likes gambling. He like really likes it. You know what I mean? He looks he looks at the orc and he's like, he really likes it like a lot. Good like, to I'm know. I'm just sitting there like rolling a coin over my knuckles back and forth, like prepared. All right. Anyways, I'm Tarina. Let's get this going. Uh, so, to play Boulder's Bones, uh, each player requires several six-sided dice. The rules are as follows. Each player puts the agreed ante in the pot. Each player rolls three dice, then proceeds clockwise around the table with the host of the game going last. On their turn, a player can choose a stand or roll. If the player stands, the next player can take a turn. Uh, a player who rolls takes an additional die and rolls it. If the total of their dice exceeds 21, they bust and are out of the game. Otherwise, they can keep rolling additional dice until they either stand or break. Everyone has, After everyone has had a turn, the highest point total, excluding players who busted, wins the game and takes the pot. And Tarina says, since we got an expert gambler here, why don't we start with the gold? I slap down a gold. And uh, the um, the uh, half-orc says, fuck this shit, and gets up and walks away. Uh, and everyone else antes, I assume. Yep. Yep. And so we're going to start, we'll say that uh, Tarina's the host of the game, and... Uh, we'll start. You're going to be on the left of her, uh, Kairos. Pardon me while I get used to your guys' character names. It's all good. Uh, yeah, so all the antis are in. Go ahead and roll three dice. Okay. So now I roll as many times as I want, or it goes around in rounds. Uh, each player rolls three dice, uh, play... So all of you roll three dice. And then we start the, uh, stay... What do they call it in here? Uh, stand or roll. So we'll start with you, Kairos. Uh, what do you want to do? I'm going to roll. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I rolled. Do you want to stand or roll? You can keep going. Okay, so I keep going now. Uh, I'm going to roll. Okay. And I will stand. Can we see his numbers? Yeah, are, are they hidden rolls? I think they're hidden. I'm uh, Actually, maybe not. Because why? it wouldn't need to be hidden, because there's no betting ground. But... Are we playing against each other or if, the dealer? But there would be a yeah. That's that's the we're we are playing against each other if there's one pot. Yeah, each other. So you would probably hide it. So you would hide it. Yeah. Or you'd hide it. Maybe you'd hide the first three and the others are open. Yep. Some part of it has to be hidden, or else there's a serious advantage to the host because they go last. Yep. Okay, so you're standing, and then uh, we got. The we'll say the half the halfling and uh, okay Ooh. 
Uh, and uh, the halfling rolls three more dice and uh, stays or stands, and then it is Jarvis. All right, I'm gonna roll. Roll again. Roll again. And crap. Did you bust? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, so now it is you, Rollercoast. All right, I'm going to roll. And keep rolling. And keep rolling. Keep rolling. <laughs> keep rolling. Wow. <laughs> Do some quick maths. And there's no maximum D6 in this game. Uh, it says no you maximum. can. It says you can keep rolling. Roll again. <laughs> and, until you bust, obviously, or Standing. until you want to stand. Uh, how many ones? I'm just curious. Did you just roll? <laughs> uh, one, two. Must three have been a lot. Ones and a bunch of twos. And uh, Tarina says, "Ulrich, are you g just going to keep riding? Why don't you take the other table so someone else can play if they want?" And Ulrich goes, "Yes, I'm just going to keep riding. Uh, I'm writing a scene about gambling, and this would be very helpful for." to me if I could just stay here. Uh, I promise to gamble at some point. And uh, then it is Tarina's turn. All right. Oh. And she stands and uh, she goes, all right. I think we got already one busted player reveal your dice 22 yeah 20 with my two re-rolls oof 19 alright <laughs> and the halfling goes reveals 20 and says fuck Tarina you best not be cheating and uh, Tarina goes just ignores it and reveals a 21 and uh, takes your guys' money. That. What are... I appreciate you sitting down with us uh, to gamble. Uh, so, what are you that's, doing here? That's not exactly why we sat down. We that's sat down... That's exactly uh, why I sat down. That's not, <laughs> why all three, that's not why some of us sat down. <laughs> We're actually looking for you, Tarina. We we're sent here by uh, Captain Zaj. We're working on his orders to uh, smash some cultists' heads. And uh, what do you want to know about cultists? Hey, where, where to find them mostly? The Dead about... Three. The Dead Three, yeah. Oh, what's your name again, Jerry? You're hanging with this. You're gonna smash some heads. I guess yeah, you can... these are my these are my buds. These are my bros. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would have played. I would have played too, but you know. Um, and uh, she goes. She kind of is mildly annoyed when you uh, are talking about this, but then like a glint, she thinks of something, and uh, and uh, says. You know, there's a. Uh, I'd be l perfectly willing to help you find folk, especially since you played with me, uh, uh, gambled with me. Uh, but uh, there's this f ship I was on a while back, and uh, I heard that. Uh, 
they're back in town and I just didn't get along with my shipmates. And uh, I'll help you folks out if you stay here. And uh, that's kind of why I'm up here partially. I thought this was the best place to hide from them, but eventually they're probably going to find me. Uh, if you stay here and uh, have my back, uh, if they show up. Oh, laptop's freezing. Bummer. Uh, <laughs> okay, and uh, she says... Just stay at the this tavern here with me, and if the pirates, shipmates, we did a little piracy. If they show up, help me. I'm not gonna mince mer words here. Kill them all. Ah, it's starting already. I see. Does that sound good? When you say kill them, you mean like dead to, all to of death. them? Yeah. I mean, like, we don't need to... That would be ideal, but if they run in fear, very grave, gr grievously wounded, that would be also good. Where are they? Are there, their ships already in town? Yeah, I've been kind of... Uh, I don't know if you've been to the gate, or any of the gates, but they're not letting anyone out of here. Who's just there? <laughs> I love Jerry. Uh, but, yeah, so I'm kind of just been trying to get away. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you stay with me for a few more hours, maybe eight hours. And if they haven't shown up by then, I'll help. Sound good? Real quick two things. How many possible shipmates are we talking about? Oh. Well, uh, it could be... I heard a few of them died uh, for mysterious reasons. And, uh, you know, probably like no less than three. Oh, well, that's doable. Second thing, you should, might have should have possibly told the barkeep not to tell anybody you were up here because he just willingly gave away that information. <sighs> Alan, he's a nice guy. He really is, and he means well. But uh, yeah, people is, is people say the same thing about me a lot. That you mean well? That I'm a nice guy, so it's, it's nice. Do you keep secrets well? Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love Jerry. Um, I can't wait till he talks to some devils. Uh, uh, okay. And Can I run downstairs real quick and have a word with Alan? Uh, sure. When you get up, Tarina goes, do we, are we simpatico here? Are we good? I believe we're good. We're good. So for Brian's benefit, we're going to, uh, but you guys agreed to, she's going to help you with your problem. If you stay here for around eight hours, she's being hunted by her former shipmate pirates. And, uh, she wants you to help kill them. Uh, if they show up, and you guys have agreed to that. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, uh, one thing that my I forgot to mention in the introduction. Yeah. Uh, you guys do also see a spider on my shoulder that is just hanging out. A real spider? Yes. Oh, creepy well, as it's fuck. A, it's, a, it's a familiar, but yes. Yeah, but it's real. The yeah. first time I met you, I definitely tried. I, I definitely like made a motion to swat it off <laughs> of your shoulder. <laughs> And it probably just poofed because it's probably got like one hit point. Right. <laughs> I don't like okay. that. So when you go downstairs, 
uh, Rolikos, uh, you, um, you hear someone, you overhear someone say, I'll bet my last copper piece that those so-called refugees are advanced scouts for an army that's preparing to attack Baldur's Gate. I swear to it. I bet it's gonna, just mark my word. And, uh, making your way to the bar, Alan is talking to the half-ogre and uh, stops the conversation when you show up and addresses you, like, what do you want? Were they being suspicious? A li- I mean, a little bit. Maybe it was a private... Nothing... It wasn't like, shut the fuck up. They're, they're coming. It was okay. nothing like that. Can I, like... Is, how packed... Is this bar, like, super packed? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. super packed. I'm going to, like, lean in and see if he leans in in kind. Yeah, he does. He's uh, waiting for you to... Uh, how can I help you? Uh, I'm just going to, like, quiet as quietly as I can so other people around me don't hear us. Just slip him a gold piece and tell him Tarina does not want anyone to know she's up there. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, that makes me... She is so shifty. That that makes me worry about why she... Do you know why she doesn't want? Uh, not exactly. Uh, it has to do with... We're, we're working for the guard. We're, we're just trying to have a private chat with her for a little bit. You're working for the guard? Where's your guard badge? I see a flaming fist. Is, you mean flaming Sorry. fist? I meant the flaming fist. I assumed you saw the badge. Yeah, okay. All right. So we're on official business. It's nothing to be concerned with. Okay. Just please, like, I, I'm running a business here. Things cost money. Be as, you know, please don't start a fight if you don't have to. Oh, uh, we will do our best. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, I, you head back up. And as you guys are kind of waiting around, you hear a few other things. You hear uh, one person talking about the Flaming Fist being decapitated. Uh, Someone says the captains are already uh, bickering over who should be in charge with older Raven Guard gone. Uh, You hear um, people wondering about who will be the next Grand Duke since older Raven Guard is gone. Uh... Some some people are saying uh, Thalamra Van Thamper. Uh, one person says... Show me the Dukes. Okay, got that. Oh, let me put this map in real quick. Some people are saying uh, Duke Bellin Stelmain, and another person says, "What? She, she had a st- she has a stroke. She's she can't. What? That's stupid." And then another person is like, "No, no, no. It's gonna be Thalam Ravanth. She's cutthroat." And another person is like, "What? She's in charge of the sewer system. Why would she? That'd be embarrassing to have." Her is Duke, and uh, this m- meeker member of this group is like, I just wish Duke Porter would. You know, he was a great businessman, and I wish he wouldn't have. People took advantage of him, and he's honest, and uh, he's not. What am I talking about? He's not going to be able to do it. Yeah, Thalamor's, Thalamor's probably going to. Those van dampers are just. And, uh, continuing on, uh, you start to hear, uh, some ghostly singing that the whole tavern, and you guys could hear the, the bar type sounds coming from down below, uh, wherever you are in the tavern, everything dies down once this ghostly singing starts happening and um this 
elf woman ghost appears above the hearth in this tavern and starts singing, and it can be heard perfectly wherever you are in the tavern. Um, and uh, Alan is just, just cleaning glasses and doing his uh, rounds around the bar. It didn't really stop on like everyone else, but the song goes that she sings. Um, it's in Elvish. So if you know Elvish, raise your hand. And uh, Roz, I can't see your hand, so I'm going to think no. Roz? Roz? Maybe everything for him froze too. Uh, you know it's weird, Brian? I did a lot of... Uh, you remember how we were getting like stuttering before? Mm -hmm. Or at least on my end? I fixed it. We've been pretty good from my end. Uh, Do you sound perfect for me? Okay. Uh, so, Gary, your character, and again, I'm sorry, With the, I'll get the names as we go. Jarvis knows mm -hmm. uh, Elvish. The rest of you are just hearing Elvish. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. Beautiful. Do not raise my hand. Okay. Uh, the song goes, Jarvis. Oh, sing a song of El Terrell. Unless you guys want me to sing in my ghostly elvish uh operatic female voice elvish. F female elvish voice yes i'm not doing that I, I plus, <laughs> I plus you considered it for a moment though and then i looked at how long the song was <laughs> uh so the song goes oh sing a song of el Terrell, of water woods and hill the sun dawns on her ruddy cliffs and fields green and still this land of long abiding joy, home of the strong and brave, renowned by all across the realms, and never once a slave. Oh, sing a song of El Terrell when foes are at her door, her fields torn by cloven feet from some infernal shore. Arise the mighty hell riders, take up your swift keen swords, then charge into the hellish fray and scatter devil hordes. Oh, sing a song of El Terrell, and when the night does fall, sleep safe beneath companion's light until the dawn does call. We're bound by mortal covenant that only ends with death, and so we'll sing of El Terrell until our final breath. And people are listening. There's, as you can imagine, uh, not very many people speak Elvish, but a few do, and... The ones that are, are have been to the Elf Song Tavern, and it clicks in your head immediately. Oh, it's Elf Song. Um, they look surprised and shocked. And Alan, when you look at Alan at the bar, he's like, "What just happened?" Type of look on his face. Um, yeah. So Jarvis, that's what you understood it, and then the rest of you just heard a beautiful song. But uh, you guys, other than hearing a beautiful song, you just notice a few people are surprised, including Alan. Uh, yeah. So I actually look at Alan and I ask who, um, if he knows who El Terrell is. Because I saw his face was shocked. So I approach him and ask him that. Yeah, El Terrell is a city that was captured or something that you heard about. El Tergard is the kingdom around it. Um Oh, got it. Okay. That's where all the refugees are coming yeah, yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, Okay, I got the cities mixed up. Okay. And you know that El Terrell, all of you, is just common knowledge. There's kind of a rivalry between Baldur's Gate and El Terrell. Um, it's up the river to the east, and uh, it's got this second sun uh, that hangs above it 24-7 for as long as you know it's been there. Uh bathing the city in radiant light and that prevents all undead from obviously ever doing well in the city. Um, so that's, you immediately know that when you heard the Companions Light uh, lyric uh, Jarvis. When you go up to Alan, you're going to ask him about his confusion? or I've been asking about his confusion then, yeah. Uh, he goes... Um, 
he he's kind of doesn't answer you right away because he's still like shocked. Um, he's just I've never heard her change lyrics before. That's never that's a a new song and um it's just uh yeah it's just weird hearing hell riders uh i don't yeah it's just a new song and then the hell rider you heard hell riders in that song right yeah i did that's Okay. Why I saw your face and I looked just as concerned and I didn't know if that was normal. So, hmm. okay. Um, um you, yeah. Go ahead. Um. Make a. Make, do you? Are you? Uh. Making it since you're right here, and if Jarvis goes back to the table and informs you of the lyrics and what he's doing uh you can roll on this as well once we get there but uh jarvis go ahead and uh make an intelligence history check okay Fourteen. okay uh the hell riders you're not you know captain zodge mentioned that uh that's what you remember uh you heard, maybe you read it somewhere, or one of your associates mentioned it as a joke, but you also heard that um, hell riders like to say that they rode to hell or something, but that sounded just like some bullshit, you know, rumor, nothing substantial, but you're definitely... Reminded that Captain Zodge uh, talked about it, and um, yeah. Okay, I go back to the rest of my group, and I I relay what I can remember from the end of uh, mostly the end of that um, poem okay. about the Hell Riders and um, the swords at night from from night to. From the, from the sun setting to day, basically, that whole piece. Okay. And uh, a few minutes later, you hear the song again, uh, which is typical when it's a normal... She, she sings her song in normal intervals, but obviously it was a different song. Uh, and she sings it again, and you're able to more clearly elucidate what she said. So I will post... Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't write it down quickly. Of enough. course not. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be able to either. Don't sweat it. I knew she sang of El Torel. I know, and I know the name of the city in every language, just about. Yeah. So make a an beyond that history check I, with advantage. Uh, okay. uh, Brian, I can't remember your character's name. Sorry. Um, I, I rolled a 17 or I rolled an 18 for a whopping 17 history check. <laughs> um, but I just go on to say that I'm, I was surprised that she, that I would hear a song of El Torel and Baldur's Gate. And, uh, Jerry and Rollercoast, you can roll a history check, not with advantage just because Jarvis, uh, basically told you everything. I'm going to post it in the general channel, uh, the, the song. Okay. Um, so you didn't say my first roll is with advantage, was it? No, it's just... Okay, uh, cool. Just mine for reasons. Cool. Tried in I rolled side. six. Also rolled six. Okay. Yeah, uh, Kairos, you, you remember a little more about the Hell Riders... You were told uh, from your childhood kind of like children's stories about them. Uh, mm -hmm. Your your grandfather would tell you about the Hell Riders of old. Uh, they were named that because they uh, descended into the nine hells on horseback to fight devils and most never returned. Um, and uh, yeah. 
they followed a angel to hell, and that's why they're called Hell Riders. I convey that the, the Hell Riders she sings of are the Hell Riders of old, not the current organization that pales in comparison. These Hell Riders were truly heroes. But it was also a, into hell. a children's story, so you know, take that as you. Sure, I still How speak often? of it with some degree of reverence. Okay, okay. How often is this song playing? Uh, it only played twice. Uh, was it just a couple minutes? It's because th- you said it plays throughout the night, or that was just the only two times. Uh, for tonight, that's the only two times. Uh, but you can. Uh, let me see if it has. Jerry's just kind of humming it to himself. He's just like. <laughs> and you hear like a drunk guy next to you kind of like singing with you and trying to <laughs> harmonize <laughs> and he's doing the hand thing um Drop down a third a little <laughs> flat <laughs> and he starts he like starts to throw up, but he checks himself. Jerry just slaps him on the back. (laughs) Uh, So while we're sitting here, Jarvis actually kind of sits, sits in the corner and starts uh, casting a ritual of detect magic. Okay. Uh, While you're doing that. um... For the upstairs of this place is, does it look down on the first floor or is it separate from the first floor? Completely? It does like, not. A banister? No. Uh, okay. 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 It looks, I don't know if you can see this. Wait, did I write on this? Anything you don't need to know? No. Uh, That's the upstairs? Next gotcha. To, next to E7 is the stairs. I gotcha. Okay. Yep. Okay. And the there was a f- actual... F- figure that appeared when the song came on you said right yeah yeah and that was in the room we're in or downstairs uh both it uh simultaneously goes between floors and uh but the the sound doesn't change the sound is is as if there's speakers or something but obviously there's not because this is a fantasy game uh while we're hanging out, I just want to say that I'm posting up at the top of the stairs there in that corner. Okay. Um, uh, Jarvis, would you have wanted to hear it a third time? And if so, would you? As I would have wanted to hear it a third. If it came on a third time, I would have started walking around to see if I see anything, anyone casting or any any magical presence or anything throughout Either the upstairs or the downstairs. Okay. Uh, you don't see anyone casting. Um, when you go and ask about a third time, Alan says, well, you could, before she goes, you can try and persuade her to sing it again. I've seen that happen a couple times. It, that's all I can do for you. Otherwise, you'll have to wait. And... Uh, yeah. So, do you want to do that or? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And you are, you are an elf. Oh, that'll lower the DC, because of course it will. Make a persuasion check. Fuck. Uh, eight. Yeah, because you're an elf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, she sings it uh, again. Um, and, uh, yeah. Do you want me, you already have the word, so I don't need to say it again. Um. I begin yeah. purring because I enjoy the song. Excellent. Excellent. Not knowing what it's being said. Do you, does Rollercoast, like, when his paws are on, like, the, arms of a chair or on the table and he's purring does he start like subtly kneading like unconsciously very subtly awesome <laughs> that's so cool L- lest it be a gambling tick <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah to when tarina sees this she goes kind of you see her kind of like squint her eyes making a mental note 
Uh, and, uh, yeah, so you guys are back upstairs, I assume, with Tarina? Oh, yeah. I haven't left upstairs. Okay. Um... Yeah, exactly. So, one sec. Got that, got that. So, um, yeah, uh, you guys are upstairs and you hear some loud jostling from downstairs and uh, you hear a gruff voice going, have you seen Rhonda? And no, I don't think there's any. And someone says to, to him, no, she's definitely here, boss. And uh, he goes, uh, and that you see Tarina tensing up and uh, she goes, shit, 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 shit. They're definitely going to kill me. Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. We'll, we'll, we'll kick their ass. We'll kick their ass. Don't worry. I sure Tarina, hope so. Get, get into one of these rooms and close the door. She starts going room to room. Uh, most of them are locked. Um, I can help. I can fight, too. I've, and she, she has... Uh, a couple daggers uh, with her. Uh, my, plan, my plan is to not have to fight. Okay. And she goes into... Let me see which rooms are not. I go to the back of the room and draw my bow. I also go to the back corner and I cast mage armor on myself. Excellent. Rena, Rena do you want to do you want to sit on my shoulders and fight for my shoulders? It's Tarina. No. Tarina. Sorry. And uh, I post back up at the top of the stairs and just bring my shield out, and I'm just, like, blocking the entire stairway. Okay. Uh, she goes into uh, one of the rooms south of the table you were playing at, and um, you hear... We're looking for an old friend of ours, you see. Goes by the name Rhonda or Tarina. Cheats at Baldur's Bones. <clears throat> Sorry. And, uh... I knew it. The pirates... Do you, you think they've made their, their rounds around the bottom floor? And, uh, you hear the man known as Dead Eye. I'll just say that. Uh, I know you're here, Rhonda. Or is it Tarina? That old bird said as much. Swore it on all her hearing and all knowing, all knowing something God. Even pricked her a little to make sure she wasn't telling no tales. I know you're here. And you see one guy with a cloudy uh, eyeball, one eyeball coming up the stairs, pretty brawny. And three people are flanking him behind. And uh, he says to you Kairos is just get out of the way private party no admittance private for who none of your business they paid for discretion what if I make it my business and I just square up and say be a bad idea oh Look at this, fellas. I think this one wants to tango with old Deadeye. I guess that, and I just say, if you want me to, and I take my shield and just shove him back <laughs> down the stairs. Okay. <laughs> make a... I make, imagine I'm standing like one or two steps above him, so I got like that yeah. higher ground. <laughs> yeah, make your shield rolls. Uh, That'd just be strength, right? Yep. Or athletics for a shove. What is that? I think it's... I played a different game, and now I don't remember any of the rules. <laughs> uh, I think it would be... Ath sure, athletics. Still garbage. Uh, nine. Okay. A whopping nine. All right. Uh, yeah, he uh, gets pushed back a little, but he's not, like, 
Uh, it doesn't go tumbling. Yeah, it didn't do what it is, and um, he I will... it off like I meant to do that, like it was a warning. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Get out of the way. You will not Private like what happens party. next. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, yeah he's going to, uh, I guess... Let's all roll initiative. <laughs> ah. Oh man, I'm a paladin. Low. <laughs> all right. Uh, the, the way we do initiative, uh, I will call out instead of just having you all yell it when you get it. I will call out a range of numbers. You tell me when you're in that range and what number it is. Uh, 25 to 20 or higher. 23. So roller coaster 23. And uh, bandit, let me roll. Wow, that's shit. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, 20 to 15. Jarvis, 15. 15 to 10. Jerry, 14. 10 to 5. What'd you... Did I skip one? One. Oh, holy <laughs> shit. Oh. One with my plus zero. That's right. Uh, I, I'm just a uh, rock sitting at the top of the stairs. Remember like, when you played a by. remember when you played a monk with advantage on initiative and a shit ton of decks? And I, and I hated going first. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm thrilled that I just got a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, in, the, in the way. World. Perfect. <laughs> Prodi was always last. That's right. That's you didn't have horrible decks either, uh, Dave. Nope, that was just rolls. <laughs> All right. Prati always had no one to shoot with his Eldritch Blast by the time his <laughs> turn came around. All right. Bandit. And... Fuck. And when you get a chance, could you throw that map of the area up one more time? If you scroll up, it should be in the general oh. channel. My bad. Let me know if it's not there. By the way, guys, I can't see what you're typing in this uh, group chat for the video call we're doing. Uh, just FYI, because uh, it. If there's something important, we'll convey it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, first in initiative would be Rollicos. So you can't see them because a large tiefling is blocking them. You can possibly can maneuver. What? Come. Can I hold my attack until he comes through the door? Yes. Beautiful. You, what That's kind of attack? Uh, my longbow. Okay. Uh, going Jarvis, you're next. Uh, and I also don't have a straight line of shot at him from the back of the room, I assume. So I'm also going to hold my firebolt for when he enters the room. Noted, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry's just up there, up on the top of the stairs next to. Uh, uh, not Jarvis. Uh, Kairos. Kairos. Brian, yeah. So are you going to... So you're behind him? Uh, yeah, I'm behind him. You, do you want to wait, or what do you want to do? Yeah, I'll just ready myself. Uh, okay. For an attack with your... What kind of weapon do you have? Just my fist. <laughs> That's <All> awesome. Right. <laughs> Just the fist. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I like Jerry Moore. Okay, uh, it is the bandit's turn, and they are going to shoot at you, Kairos, past their boss, uh, which gives you cover. Sweet. Uh, lurp -a -derp -a -derp. Give me the plus two. Yeah, half cover. Okay. And they're going to shoot with their light crossbow. Awesome. Natural 20. Fuck. Oh, damn it. I'm going to die. Um, <sighs> you know, 20 AC at level one should be really good. 
I can't wait to tell you what they had this encounter being. Uh, so, okay, fuck. I'm sorry. Uh, shit happens. Lay it on me. I rolled shitty on the damage. Three damage. Piercing damage. I could take that. Uh, double it, because it's a crit. I can still take that. Ready your lay on hands, maybe? <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe. The second, uh, that's his turn. Uh, going back to initiative. Captain Deadeye's turn. And he is going to... Does he have, like, a lazy eye? It's, a. Uh, it's like, um... What's Clouded, it? you said? Yeah, what's it? Oh, my... Uh, Got it. Cataract. Milky. Cataract, thank you. Jesus. So uh, it is milky. But they call it milky eye. Uh, that's their scientific term. The old milk eye. Uh, <laughs> Captain Deadeye scoffs, and he's going to make three attacks, two with his scimitar and one with his dagger. Jesus. Uh, natural one on one and a 22 on the other. For the scimitar, and then dagger is a 16 on the dagger. Nope. That's, nope. And the one that hit the scimitar is a... Uh, one One did hit? Yeah, not, yeah, it was a 22 on the second. Uh, gotcha. I missed that one. Uh, it is five damage. <sighs> okay. And that's his turn. And it's the another bandit's turn. <laughs> they have no one Another else. One to man. Shoot. They have no one else one. to shoot at. That uh, shit happens. Uh, okay, good. So that's a. <laughs> um. That's an eight to hit, and next bandit is a fifteen to hit. So their, nope. their light crossbow shoots by. You guys see the bolts hit the wall. And now it is Kairos. It is your turn. How you looking, buddy? Uh, real bad. Um, how's, your, uh, how's your grip on life, your grasp of <laughs> life? It's, uh, it's uh, dangling, <laughs> is how I would describe it. Um, I'm going to... I have a shield in one hand. I haven't pulled out my morning star, so I'm going to grab my coin around my neck, mm -hmm. and it glows within my fist, and I'll lay on hands myself. <laughs> um, all of it. When I think or about I horror, I touch myself. Oh. That's right. That's right. Um, so that heals that. And that's my action. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to backstep. So that I'm still, we're still kind of blocking the way, but it lets like one person in and lets uh, Jerry hit people if he wants to hit people. Okay. So it, one, once he can. So I'm, I'm just going to make a little bit of space, but still try to like keep the most of the room still, still stay in the way more or less. Okay. Uh, it looked like the stairs went up into a corner. So yeah. So right here yeah so I imagine I imagine Jerry's like to the left there and I'm gonna like back up into the corner okay if All right. that makes sense yeah uh, are you still gonna stay within melee range then um, well I want to leave enough space for someone to actually reach like get up in in sight of everybody else uh, so that would be stepping out of melee range okay Unfortunately, Ooh, I rolled a two. You lucky Woo! dog. That uh, shield is catching all sorts of shit. Yep. All right. If that opens up a shot at all. Not yet. Uh, okay. We're back to the top of the round. Uh, Rollercoast. Can I angle so I can see the staircase? See this guy standing in the stairway at all? Uh. You would need to get a little higher. Is there a table I can stand yeah, on? Yeah, there are two tables you can stand on. Can I? I would like to stand on the okay. closest table to me. You've done it, and you have a view of Deadeye. I'm going to shoot him with my longbow. Have at it. Uh, 
That is a 15 to hit. Okay. Uh, yeah, that um, hits. That'll be 11 damage. Okay. I'm sorry. That's wrong. Uh, 9 damage. Okay. Uh, anything else? Is it bonus action reload? I believe. Uh, off the top of my head, you'd have to tell me. I can look it up. Um, what's the weapon? Longbow. Longbow. Well, do you have there's, like multi attack? No reloading. Yeah, you'd have to have extra attack. Do you have multi? I do not have multi attack yet. Okay. I just wanted to ready my shot for my next turn. Is what it was. Yeah, I think you can do that. I think drawing the or drawing your arrow, knocking it, is part of the attack yeah. action. Yeah, I don't think you have oh. to necessarily reload it. If it wasn't, I would not care, and you can do it <laughs> anyways because that would be stupid. All right, that's the end of my turn. Uh, Jarvis, yeah, I think you're muted. My bad. Seeing Rollercoaster take a shot off from up the table. Uh, I quickly jump. Does it look like the, the table can support me if I jump on it, or does it look like... Uh, yeah. It looks like a biggish table, right? Okay. Yeah. So I quickly also jump on the table, and I get my firebolt off at... Um, Deadeye? Deadeye, yep. Do it. What'd you roll? And it is a... Uh, uh, 15? Yep. Ah, sweet. G10. Would have helped if I had my D10 ready. Seven damage. Okay. Anything else? And then I get off the table and go back to the corner of the room. Okay. Uh, Jerry! Can I throw a table down the stairs without hitting uh, Brian? Um, Can I attempt to do that? Because I don't think I'm going to do it with the roll I had. Uh, you would have to go... Fifteen feet of movement. You wouldn't be able to do it in this turn. Okay, I go pick up a table then. Okay. I, uh, I rolled this. I only rolled a seven strength, though. Yeah, um, you're dragging it over. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, Kairos, you see him, after you made a little space for him, just walk away. And then he grabs, starts yep. pulling, pulling the table over. <laughs> well, I've never fought with him before, so I'm learning some things today. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Like uh, lo love where your head's at. I imagine, uh, I imagine you like move to the side <laughs> and like put your hand out. I, I move to the side, super bloody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you like put your hand out to, to to signify like have at it. And he was already walking away with his back. <laughs> it's not the table I'm on, is it? No, no. Uh, oh my god. Uh, uh, you're on a different table. There's two tables in there. Okay, so you're about <laughs> ten feet away you're, from the not, stairway. But you're not still in. You're not still within reach of them, are you? Can you get hit again? No, me. He, 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 you're not in like line of sight, right? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah. You're and then I just need to. And then I just need to take one step forward, <laughs> and then he can keep swinging at me too. It's all good. All right. I'm not getting the picture of what's happening. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, here. Uh, where Don't my, when you, when you throw this I, table down the stairs, it's all going to be worth it. Where my middle <laughs> finger is, Dave, where yeah, my middle he, finger is, yeah, uh, yeah, he, Kairos is right at the, the top. And he's at the top of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I thought you, they were further down the stairs and he stepped to the side to where they didn't have line of sight on him anymore. No, I more stepped back. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, so that's Jerry's turn. Uh, Bandit's turn. By the way, 
I forgot to tell you guys. Uh, in my games, when you start an adventure, everybody starts with one health potion. So I didn't just make oh. that up because I want to go easy on... Nope, this is true. This, I, I can vouch for uh, this. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> all right, bandit's turn. That's what I was doing. Uh, one bandit is going to run past you. Do you want to try to smack him? Me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I would. Do it. Fifteen. Yep. With my morning star. Uh, four points of damage, bare minimum. <laughs> okay, four. Uh, you smack him, and he keeps running by, and he is now kind of close to Jerry pulling the table over. <laughs> and uh, he's going to swing at Jerry with his scimitar. 12. Does a 12 hit, Jerry? No. Okay. Uh, he hits the table you're pulling, and it almost hits your fingers, like, right next to it. And I assume you guys, Ooh. like, make eye contact when he does that. It's just like, wham! You just make eye contact. And uh, that's his turn, Captain Deadeye's turn. Captain Deadeye is going to... Go after the guy who wouldn't let him come upstairs. Fair. And uh, multi attack. Uh, that's a 19 and a 22. Both hit. And a dagger attack. I hate this. Uh, I rolled a nat 20 on the dagger. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Why are your dice so loaded? Yeah, I don't know. Um, all right. Okay, okay. I rolled the lowest on the scimitars. Let's see what I roll on the dagger. Yeah, but all three hit. I'm going down. <laughs> uh, so four total damage. No. Uh, nope, I was wrong. Um... Eight total damage for the scimitars. I'm down. Okay. Uh, then he will uh, make his way into the rest of the room as you go down. Scoff at you as he's passing your unconscious body. And... Uh, Get to let's see, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Get past the bandit that's next to Jerry on top of the uh, bear rug, and he's kind of in the middle of the room, about ten feet away from you. Uh, roller coast on the table. Okay. And it is bandit number two's turn. Bandit number two is going to run up, and it's going to try to hit Jerry. Jerry! Nat one. He goes to swing at you and someone roll a d6. If it's three or lower, he hits his buddy. If it's above that, he just looks like an idiot. Oh, uh, five. Okay, just looks like an idiot. Uh... And the next bandit is going to run up, and where are you? You're in the corner of the room, Jarvis? Yes. Okay. That corner. Uh, uh, yeah, he'll go after Jerry again, or Jerry too. 14 to hit? Yep, that hits. Just pulling a table over. <laughs> yes. Regret two, that. Two slashing damage as he cuts is that, you a back. Is that, is that already halved? Or? No, I'm not having anything for you, so you do the halving. Okay. Are you okay. raging? Did you rage last round? No. Why is it halved? 
I I thought barbarians would just automatically have. So no, you have to be. It's only it. when you're raging. Yeah, so it's, should probably should probably rage right about now. Then you can do that uh, on your on next your turn. turn. Kairos, death save. Fail. Okay. A five. Uh, okay. Roller coast. How far away is the captain from me? Ten feet. Yeah. Can I? How far behind me do I have to move? You've got another five feet if to move away from him. Yeah, I want to get down from the table so at least the table's between us, and then move back into the corner. Okay. Shoot him with the longbow. How about it? Uh, 23 to hit. Oh, yeah. He's got a AC of 15, so um, that doesn't need to be a secret because you guys could figure it out uh, eventually. So, yeah, he's got... The Deadeye's got an AC of 15. That's four damage. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh... No, that'll be it. I'll hold my position there. Jarvis... Um, having not used Mage Hand before, quick question. Can I, would it be two actions, if one to cast Mage Hand and then another one to use it to give a healing potion to uh, Kairos? Yeah. Okay. So on this turn, then, I'm going to cast Mage Hand, uh, use my action to cast Mage Hand. Is you going to take your own potion to him, or are you going to try to pull his out? I'm going to take my own to him. Okay. So I just want to double check this. I'm reading the spell. Uh, you can use your action to control the hand. You can use the hand to manipulate an object, open an unlocked door or container, store or retrieve an item from an oven, or pour the contents. Yeah, so retrieving an item from your pocket, which is an open container. And... You're about 40 feet away from him, and you can only move that 30 feet. So, okay, I'm going to move. I can go 30 feet with Mage Hand, so I'm going to move 10 feet. Okay. So you're slightly closer to the bandits and the Deadeye, uh, and next turn you will be able to pour it in his mouth. Okay. Jerry! Um, Jerry, just is like... Uh, drops the table. Doesn't think he can do anything with that at this point because there's no there's no more bandits on the stairs, right? Nope, they're mostly around you. Yeah, so Jerry just like fuck it, and he gets his he gets his great axe and just swings that. Okay, do you want a bonus um, action rage? I'm gonna do that after the axe. Do you should get? I, should I do the? You bonus should do it action? before. Oh, okay, I didn't know I could do the bonus action before. Yeah, um, you can yeah, do yeah, any rage. of them. Yeah, I'll do. I'll rage. Okay, what does your rage look like? <laughs> uh, he drops the table and just starts, like, shaking. It's just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> he just he, uh, grabs his great axe and just starts swinging it. Um, at, at who? There's three bandits and one dead eye. He goes at the first bandit who, who uh, rolled a nat one. Okay. So it's uh let's see. That's a twenty three. Oh yeah. And then uh, uh that's I guess eight eight damage. Does that include your rage damage? Oh, three. oh no, I don't know. I this is the first time I'm doing uh Yeah, I just want to make sure that's why I'm asking. Let me uh go to your character sheet. I bet it's plus two, I think that's where it starts. I don't know barbarian super well. I don't either. Rage is a bonus action. You gain advantage on strength checks, plus two melee damage, yeah. So ten? So it would be ten, yeah. Excellent. Because it's tw D12 plus three and then plus two. So you cleave this guy in the head and he falls dead. Nice. Golf claps. Uh, anything else? Uh... 
rage tends to release your okay. No, yeah, I can't I can't do anything else, so Okay. Captain Deadeye, the bandit's dead, so Captain Deadeye is uh going to head he sees his bandits are working on Jerry. He's going to head over to Roller Coast, the kitty cat, and is going to multi attack. Holy fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> Not again. <sighs> uh, DMing level ones. <laughs> It's a 16 on the first one and a natural 20 on the second. Yes, to both. Oh, my God. Ouch. (laughs) A 21 on the dagger. A 21 on the dagger? Yeah. (sighs) Yeah, I'm down. I haven't given you damage. Oh, I thought you meant damage. No. Like, oh, <laughs> 21 shit. damage on a dagger attack? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's one hell of a crit. No. that The, the scimitar critted. Okay, then yeah, all three crit. Or all three hit. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, plus. Sixteen damage total. Sixteen. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Shit. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh jeez. This is like Call of Cthulhu level uh, craziness. Um, level one. That'll happen. All right. So it's Dead Eye's turn. He scoffs it at you. Um. Maybe sheds a tiny tear because he thinks of his childhood cat. And the bandits are going to swing it at you for killing their bandit friend, Jerry. I don't even know what's happening. This is so dumb. Use different dice. I'm going to, just because it's ridiculous. (laughs) I'm just going to throw it out there. I look adorable while I'm unconscious. I bet. I bet. Uh, Except for the blood. Grab a different. Uh, <laughs> one of them crits on you, Jerry. And the other misses. Thank God. At least you're a barbarian, so and now you're band- raging. <laughs> one of the bandits is down, but the captain's still up, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Cool. He's got a couple arrows in him. That is 11 slashing damage, not have Jerry. So what do you do? The... the- the better of the two, or the the more advantageous having. Uh, you, you round, round down. Up, down. Up five. Okay. Yeah. And then it is Kairos is turn. Pass. Cool. Roller coast death save. Oops, wrong chat. Hold on. Pass. Okay. Uh, Jarvis. All right. Jarvis now within range of uh, Kairos uses his mage hand to bring his uh, healing potion over to Kairos and shoves it down his throat. Yep. 2d4 plus 2, right? Yep. Eight. Nice. Oh. And that was my action. Can I bonus action since uh, I believe um, Rollercoaster is right next to me? I can't bonus action to take his healing potion and give it to him, can I? Uh, no, no. Out of his own, okay. No. Um, feeding yourself a healing potion uh, is a bonus action. Uh, feeding gotcha. someone else is an action. Uh, is that it? Uh, am I within attack of opportunity range from any of the bandits? No. Okay, then I step back to the back corner again. Copy that. Uh, right. So that's your turn? Yep. Jerry? Jerry takes the, uh, the raging 
raging great axe and he takes a swing at the other uh there's two bandits still next to me right yep yep all right he takes another swing with his great axe uh yeah I'm gonna go. <sighs> uh so i rolled a two but that was seven seven on the great axe nope they have an ac of 12 okay so I uh, just use my bonus action to take the healing potion. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll. Uh, 2d4 plus 2. So 6. Okay. And Tarina, who luckily has been in this room to the south of the table where Deadeye is, she's been slowly opening the door. And uh, has stealthily been sneaking up and is going to uh, sneak attack, multi attack, and surprise this nice, asshole. Nice, nice. And this is the captain? Tarina, yeah. yeah, Tarina's going after Deadeye, yeah. Yes. Do you want me to roll with the other d20 that I was rolling against you guys? Yes, the yes. good one, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the good one, please. <laughs> please, the weighted one in favor of the 20. Fun fact, I bought the uh, the uh, D&D dice, Descent into Avernus uh, dice oh, yeah, box, yeah, yeah. and these are them, and those are what I'm rolling in the box, so maybe it's uh, foreshadowing of what's to come. <laughs> Okay, hits on one. And that's uh, eight plus sneak attack. With her short sword, she stabs him in the back for 15 damage. Damn. Love that sneak Gotta attack. Gotta love that sneak attack. Unless you're playing as Ezio, <laughs> and you can't assassinate anything. And then you uh, see uh, Dead I take it and l turns around, and he's looking pretty rough now. Uh, oh, there you are, Tarina. And looking for you. Coughing up blood. Uh, and she is going to disengage bonus action and go to the other side of the room 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 cool alright and now it's Deadeye's turn and Deadeye's gonna follow her as you do just don't mind me while I play D&D &D by myself uh, well, he almost rolled a crit. <coughs> oh my god. Did you go back to those dice? I did. You guys have got to <laughs> specify. I, I, I used the dice you requested, and I kept using them, so you guys have to specify. Uh, she has an armor class of 12. Yeah, both hit. Fuck. And he unloads on her for 18 damage. Oh, damn. Wow. And she immediately gets just... There's a reason why she got real scared once they came and she heard the voices. Uh, she looks rough. But she's still alive. Oh. Uh, How does that eye look right now? bloodied okay now it's a bandit's turn they're gonna go after you Jerry that's what I'm good for <laughs> uh okay that is a 13 and a 9 uh 
I don't think either of them hit. My armor class is 13. 13 hits. 13 hits? Okay. Two points of slashing damage. Not, Alrighty. Not halved. Kairos... Um, so if you chase Tarina, then he's, pr- if I stand up, can I still reach him? No. Uh, he is no, on the out. other side of the room. Okay. Then I'm going to stand up. How far away is he? 5, 10, 15, 20 feet. Perfect. Um, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to hoist a javelin and I'm going to shout, I said no admittance and chuck it at him. <laughs> please uh, hit. Please hit. <laughs> Crit. Nice. Yes. Not 20. Um, so that's... Needed that. Nine, nine points of damage. Okay. He takes it right in the shoulder, right next to the uh, collarbone. And, and Kairos has what, what's called, what's referred to as a battlefield voice. It carries and is loud. Very loud. <laughs> Is that a character thing or just like some... Nope, just a thing. Okay. Just his just his just him. Okay. <laughs> uh All right. And you do hear like people scuffling out cuz you're close to the uh stairs going downstairs. You hear people leaving uh cuz they hear all this shit going on. Uh Rollercoast. All right, let's see here. Save. Okay. Uh, Jarvis? Uh, so, uh, the bandit is, or the uh, dead eye still up, right? Yeah, he's on the diagonal opposite side of the room from where you are. All right, I'm going to cast uh, Hideous Laughter. Am I within 30 feet of him? You would have to move 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, yeah, you're in, you would need to move 5 feet, but basically... All right, I move up a little bit, and I cast Hideous Laughter. What's the save? Wisdom. Uh, Natural 20. (laughs) This is fucking nuts. Uh, You guys got to tell me which dice to roll. I don't like these dice. They're the Descent to Avernus dice. Sorry. Yeah, that means they're definitely weighted. (laughs) So Demons would definitely pull that shit. Specify <laughs> specify which die to roll. Uh, I've got this kind of clear, oh, sorry, clear angelic purpley one. Uh, so you could specify that one. Okay, um, noted. <laughs> anything else, Relicos? Uh Jarvis, no. Or Jarvis, sorry. Nope. Uh, Steps back five feet into his corner again. His squishy, <laughs> squishy corner. <laughs> The wizard corner. Uh, yeah. Jerry. Jerry pulls pulls his axe back up and tries to whip it around, see what I get here. Oops, wrong, wrong uh, channel. God damn it. Uh, he rolls another seven. Totally. Total? Totally misses. Yeah, total. Uh well, and what am I? If uh, oh, do I have advantage on when I'm raging? Do I get something when I'm raging? You me? add five to what you rolled. Yeah, and then no, 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 no additional to. Uh, to that's your attack. reckless so attack. So, so not, not yet. Seven. It's just a seven then. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. Anything Bonus else? Back. I can't really do anything else. Can I? Bonus actions, I can just rage and two-weapon fighting, but, I mean, as a bonus action, I can't get my javelin out, right? No. Yeah, so I can't do anything. Okay. Uh, Tarina's turn. Okay. Which dice do you want me to roll? The good dice. (laughs) The, 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 The angelic purple one. Okay. The weighted ones. Oh, okay. So which ones? Oh, wait, no, no. The weight. No, sorry. This is our teammate. Yeah. Yeah, the weighted, the weighted ones. ones. The, the, the demon <laughs> dice. <laughs> Just say demon or devil dice. Uh, yeah, she hits with both, of course, but she didn't crit, which is weird. Uh, <laughs> How weird. 
I'm sending these back. <laughs> <laughs> One of my rolls wasn't a crit. Uh, I've critted that? like four times at least, I feel like. Yeah. At least. More, I think. Uh, she does 12 damage, and Deadeye is real rough. Real rough. Bandit's turn. Jerry. I didn't crit, but I'm still using the demon dice. Uh, <laughs> um, it's a 19 and a 15. Yeah, they both hit. That is 12 damage. That's before halving. Got it. And the bandits are done. Kairos. Uh, now that I'm standing, can I reach him? Uh, I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to run up to him um, and this time say, I'm not finished with you, and bash his, I scoop up my morning star as I'm heading out over to him, and I bash him in the head with it, or try to at least. Get him. 19 to hit for 10 points of damage. Killing yeah. blow. How do you smash him? Like the head, like I I, I, I use a spiked morning star. So, so he's I like standing so and pop his head with a watermelon, like a watermelon, like yeah. right on top. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Uh, <laughs> he goes down, and uh, Tarina. Now that you're closer, she looks just about as rough as he did. She's one hit away. Uh, Plus, I popped his head right in front of her, so she's got all of his blood on her, too. Now. Yeah. She's starting to realize that he's dead, and even though she she has viscera and an eyeball on her, she uh, is looking happy. Anything else? Uh, no, that'll be it for me. Rollercoast. All right, third and hopefully final. save so final so you're back up to one hit point and i you don't get to go until next turn i think correct uh jarvis jarvis there's a firebolt at bandit yeah um there's one two left there's two left two left throw the bandit at the uh, throw firebolt at the most bloody one they haven't been uh smashed yet. oh okay well uh closest to me sure they have a, and that is uh, 21. To yep, hit. yep. And six damage. Okay. Bloodied. Anything else? I am done. Uh, Jerry. God damn it. I rolled an eight. Uh, so he just <laughs> misses with his axe again. You know what this is? This is, uh, I think, the universe telling you. You need real dice. <laughs> yeah. Discord, apparently, Discord rolling is not working for you. You need to order some of the dice uh, from the set. Preferably. Yeah. yeah. They're only yeah like, order some. You know what's nice about them? It's like only 20 bucks, and it comes with the, the case has a bunch of maps in it of various places, what devils look like, uh, with little descriptions from Volo on, on the back, and the box that it comes in is lined in velvet. Like a rolling box. It's pretty cool. What do you know? Uh, so I highly recommend box it. Is evil. <laughs> um, poor Jerry. Tarina. The yeah, Jerry's just raging on the on the uh, floor. Basically, he's like <laughs> chopping up the floor. <laughs> After you, you you killed. You're very sorry about it. Your first swing though was a killing shot, right? Was yeah. Uh, well, you, you got that going for you. So, uh, <laughs> Tarina runs up to the Don't bandit. Patronize me. <laughs> runs up to the bandit and is going to multi attack with her short sword. Both hit. Didn't specify what dice to roll. I'm using demon dice. Oh, okay. Good idea. Really not thinking about it. Uh, 10 plus sneak attack. Yeah, kills the the one that 
Jarvis didn't hit. Gives it a quick one two stabby stabby. And bandit that Jarvis hit. Scoop. New, new dice, new dice, new dice. Okay, good call. Uh, he's going to try and run. Uh, and Tarina and Jerry get an attack of opportunity. Jerry? But Tarina can use the devil dice. Okay, well, I used the angel dice with Tarina and she still hit. But Jerry, what'd you get? <clears throat> Sorry, what? So, opportunity attack? Yeah. Do something crazy. Um. Yeah, he just... I don't know. How about he just tries to trip one of the... Uh, is it on the bandit? Yeah, the only one that's left to... alive. Do you want to swing your axe at it? Sure. He gets uh, 23. Yeah. Uh, roll T12. So, plus, I think it's so plus three, plus two, so 16 damage. Mm. You smoke this guy. How do you, how do you describe how you kill him? Um, <laughs> the axe just like sends his head like, just like into his into his uh, torso. So you hit him with the flat end? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. The other end wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> you, you saw you saw Kairos use a blunt-ish weapon, and uh, you wanted to get in on that head-smashing action. <laughs> so the room is clear now, and... Uh, as you're kind of catching the le- seconds after uh, doing this, you see one bandit who hadn't come up yet peek his head over and just go, oh, fuck, get, run! And apparently they had left a couple guys downstairs and they're taking off. Um, but I run after one and throw a fireball. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's going to take... Is this, is this, is Wait, this do I see... I see his head pop up, right? Yeah, all of you see his head pop up, but he's, yeah. you also heard him go, fuck! And oh, you know what? Never mind. I can't get to the stairs. So yeah, you, you would have would have taken... Yeah, yeah. forget it. So, Jerry... Can Jerry do an opportunity attack with his javelin? No, he's... He dipped, like, literally his head popped. Uh, uh, but they're taking off, and Tarina is like... We got the... Oh, we got, we got the main dead eyes an asshole. All these guys are assholes. Uh, yeah, but he's a dead one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I guess I need to help you guys now find uh, some cultists. Uh, That's the deal. Here. Nobody worry about me. Oh yeah, You're you look up. Uh, Oh, rough barely. There, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you got one one uh, hit point. <laughs> I'm breathing. Uh, uh, I already used my potion of healing on him. So on. I just on <laughs> Kyra. Well, let's yeah. just let's just sit down and take a breather yeah. just for a minute. So I'm gonna start patting. I mean, I'm actually doing okay right now. So I just kneel down and start patting down Dead Eye. Oh, okay. You don't need it anymore. <laughs> dead Eye. Dead Eye. Dead Eye. Dead Eye. So, Tuck, uh, let's see. You find two gold necklaces. They're worth 25 gold pieces each. A blackened gold ring with a white pearl set in it. Worth uh, 125 gold pieces. Find a pouch uh, on the inside of Dead Eye's vest containing 32 gold pieces and 15 silver pieces. And I assume you guys search the other pirates. Yes. Yep. And we'll eventually get there. Uh, total for 
you find three on one, six on another, and two on another of silver pieces. Three, six, and two? Yeah. Sweet. Um, we're just divvying all that up or what? Uh, yeah, that's what I figured we were going to do. Cool. And but uh, I was going to, I put what I find on the table um, and start splitting up what I find at least. I assume we all do. I do the same thing. Okay. Yeah. You guys can do that. Uh, I'll work that out. <laughs> and Tarina says, uh, yeah, um, so, uh, the Colts, uh, here, here, here's what I know, uh, and she's, like, bleeding, um, several blocks northwest of here is a public bathhouse, uh, with a walled garden and stuff, that, and there's, a uh, frolicking nymphs, oh, Frolicking nymphs carved into its front gates. Uh, followers of the Dead Three have been seen coming and going from the bathhouse, and I'm told there's a secret door inside that leads to their dungeon. Uh, that's where the killers are hiding. Uh, cultist killers. Seems some pretty useful information there. And you don't know where in the house that, that secret door is? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Maybe there's someone inside that you could ask, but I that's all I know right now. I'm going to... I thank you so much for your help. I'm going to... And she uh, starts to walk away and then stops and pulls out the money she won from you guys and throws it on the table and then says uh, I think I said thank you but if in case I haven't thanks again uh, bye it's been a pleasure um, I've actually so the the owner of the uh, tavern what was his name Alan yeah Alan Alan um, so I call Alan and uh, over to us. He uh, walks up and he's flanked or followed by the animated suit of armor. And he goes, I knew this was going to happen. I'm so terribly sorry for what's uh, happened. We'll help you uh, clean up a bit. But we've taken care of the problem for you. Um, wondering if you would, we'd be able to get uh, stay here at a discount. Uh, after destroying my second floor. I mean, if we weren't here, it would be probably more destroyed. Make a persuasion check. Natural 20. Nice. Uh, he goes, yeah, I suppose we can make that happen. Uh, Let's see what rooms are open. So there are, there's E9, which is the room that Tarina jumped in hiding. And he says that one is uh, the, Big one at a discount's usually eight silver pieces. It's got a double bed. Uh, uh, I can give you that for four. It's the best I can do. Uh, Thank you. And then there's uh, a couple of single bedrooms uh, closer to the stairs that are... Uh, let's see... You know what? Those are on the house. I don't want to do math right now. I'm starting <laughs> to get a headache. Uh, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, do me a favor and uh, put 
drag these bodies out and put them out front. Uh, help my animated armor. And then also just... I'll have the animated armor do the mopping, but just... Before you go to bed, put the tables how they were and the chairs upright. Did we smash any of the tables or it never got smashed? Never, well, they got axes in them. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, hacked a bit. But and, they didn't get thrown by the, by the giant... Uh, no. Okay. Uh, one table has like... It looks like a very... Sure. Ch- been dragged. Yeah, and it's been chopped. So, uh, yeah. And then he goes... Okay. Uh, anything else? Um, no, I don't. I can't think of anything right now. Okay. Well, I'll. Uh, and he turns to Clank, his animated armor. He's like, Clank, uh, grab the big one and pull pull him outside. And Clank starts doing that. I assume you guys help. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, he gives you some free drinks. And that's where we're going to call it. Sweet. I like it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. It was fun to get back into it. Happy to join you guys. It was a rocky first fight, but we prevailed. Welcome to... <laughs> happy I got to go down and come back up and still do some damage. It worked out for me. Welcome to yeah. level one. Actually, yeah. welcome to level two. Because you guys level. It won't be this quick in the future. So enjoy the benef- the only benefit of level one, which is leveling quicker. <laughs> I like homework. <laughs> um, I'm- I finally get to be a real paladin. With real paladin abilities. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave. How much? How much money did we all split? Did you? Say uh, yeah. So we have thirty-seven gold and twenty-six silver in coinage, and then one hundred and seventy-five gold in jewelry oh, that you would oh, have to yeah. sell. That we'd have to sell. So in yeah. terms of splitting up co- raw coinage between the four of us, that's uh, eight gold per person. Eight gold, eight silver per person with a few coins left over. Okay, thanks. Eight gold, what was it? Eight gold, eight silver. Okay. Did, that, did you include what you guys lost in the gambling that she gave back? I did. Okay. I, that was five gold for that pot. I believe there were five players. Yeah. So that would have been five gold. Uh, serious note, uh, did Kairos actually kill my spider? Or do I still have that? Oh, he just poofed. When he poofs, you can just poof him back. We're we're saying that that was like... uh, (laughs) That was when I first met you. Yeah, so weeks ago. So when you... So when... uh, I guess I don't fully understand... uh, Familiars? Find familiars. So you spend the 10 gold to create it the first time, but every time it dies, you can re-poof it back? Uh, You have to spend 10 gold in incense uh, to burn in a... What's the special name of the basin that you burn it in to summon the familiar? I forget what it's called, but you do that. A brazier. A brazier. You already have it, uh, and you summon it back, and you can poof it back in and out, but when it dies, you have to do the ritual again. Okay. Got it. So don't even worry about the joke we were talking about that happened weeks ago. Gotcha. And that's already been accounted for. Um, Other than that... I will, uh, let's call it, and we'll do this shit again next week. Two people. I, uh, anyway, I'll be in touch with you, Jake. Okay. How about next week? Okay. Uh, thanks, guys, and without further ado, I uh, hope you enjoyed the first episode of Descent into Avernus. Um, yeah, s- stay tuned to Venture Ventures, Twitter, and other shit if I get to... Uh, posting on those for any updates and uh yeah see you next time